So I was having a super stressful week. I was getting ready for a photo shoot that was going to be taken here in Chickenlandia for my book that comes out in February of 2023. So my friend Julie and I were just scrambling, trying to get everything ready. And at the last minute, I took a picture of all my chickens on the roost. I just decided to take a picture of them with this beautiful artwork behind it. And I noticed that my chicken Salt, she's a little white chicken that I've had for a while, she did not look good and I picked her up and she was like all bloody and I realized she had a prolapsed vent and if you don't know what that is it is not good <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Chickenlandia. I am a backyard chicken educator here in the Pacific Northwest, but you can call me the president of Chickenlandia. I've got a matcha latte with chia seeds in it. <laughs> if you wanna know what bougie is, this is it, okay? <laughs> bougie and proud. It's hazelnut milk, chia seeds, and green tea. It's not very good. <laughs> it really isn't. <laughs> too sweet. So when I have a sick or injured chicken, I do not bust out my camera because that's just not what I'm thinking at that time. At that time, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I have an emergency situation and I need to deal with it. So I don't have any gruesome photos of Salt's prolapse vent. I just don't have that. What I do have is this stuffy. Now, when I teach in-person classes, sometimes I'll use a stuffy or a puppet to illustrate certain things for my students. So that's what I'm gonna use today. And then I have this like little thing that I'm gonna use that this will be the vent. And I promise you we'll make it work, okay? And I hope that you'll stick through to the end of the video because I am gonna give you a recipe that my veterinarian gave me that will really help with a prolapse vent. And I'm just gonna give you the steps on how to make it. So just stay with me through the end because I think that might be really useful for you to know. So just using my prop, I wanna show you. So this is the chicken's vent. A chicken vent is where all the magic happens. That's where they lay their eggs. That's where fertilization happens. <coughs> their vent is where they poop out of. So really that's just where all the magic happens. It, it's a very important part of a chicken's anatomy and it's very important for it to be healthy and working properly. When a vent is prolapsed, it means that part of the intestines have actually come out. This kind, you know, kind of looks like this. You'll be able to tell. Like there, there's no guessing when a chicken has a prolapsed vent. Like it's very obvious, and obviously the chicken would appear not well. There will probably be blood involved, and you will be able to see where part of their intestines have come out a little bit. And you know, this condition can happen for a number of reasons. Sometimes it can be lack of nutrients like calcium. Sometimes it can be uh, from an illness going on. It can be from stress. It can be from overactive laying or laying like an egg that's too big. I really don't know why this happened to Salt because she's always been such a healthy chicken. I was actually very surprised when it happened. So in Chickenlandia, when I have chickens that are sick, I will do what's called the rest method. And if you wanna learn what that is, I will post a video down in the description um, because I don't wanna go into it too much here. But basically, you know, I brought her inside, I gave her some scrambled eggs, I gave her um, some electrolytes and vitamins. I just wanted to give her some TLC so that she could concentrate on getting better. And that's what really the rest method is all about. Now, the thing about a prolapse is that you really need to treat it quickly. And I will tell you that what you need to do as quick as you can is push the prolapse 
back into the chicken. <laughs> and you know, this is where people get really squeamish, but it's, it's actually not that bad. I'm gonna show you how to do it using my puppet here. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure this area is very clean. You can run them under some warm water. Um, you, you know, just make sure that there's not any debris on it. Make sure it's clean. You can put some um, vetricin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I always pronounce it wrong. <laughs> vetricin. You can spray some colloidal silver on it. You just want to make sure it's clean and that there's no chance of like bacterial growth because that's what you don't want. You don't want them to get an infection. If you have some sterile gloves, it is a good idea to put some sterile gloves on. Hopefully you'll have those and whatever uh, chicken first aid kit that you have. If you want to know how to create a chicken first aid kit, I'll put a link for a video I did about that in the description too. So you're gonna take your finger, now with salt, she's a tiny little chicken. So I took my pinky and I just very gently, and you know, my, my nails were clipped, <laughs> very gently pushed it back in. Okay, you wanna push it back in and kind of hold it closed. And once you have it closed, it's a good idea to use, you know, what I use is raw honey. And I will slather that around the, uh, the vent just to kind of um, encourage that inflammation to go net to go down then i just i kind of held her closed for as long as she would tolerate it you know the longer the better because you really don't want it to just pop right back out and sometimes they're just they're straining and they're uncomfortable and that inflammation makes them kind of strain more and they'll push it right back out and you don't want that so the longer you can sit there maybe with like a paper towel and just hold it over the vent so that it doesn't pop out the better unfortunately with salt it just kept popping back out i would push it back in it would pop back out she even laid an egg you know it's just like i could not get it to stay in and so at this point and i know not everybody can do this but this is what i did i actually had to call the vet you know i do want to acknowledge that i know not everybody has access to a veterinarian and of course not everybody can afford to take their chickens to a veterinarian i completely understand that and that's why i'm doing this video because i want you to have these tools at home so what the vet did is he actually put a little stitch so we're going to illustrate that by pulling this closed <laughs> he put a little stitch on um salt's vent like right here and made it close up and he was just hoping that we you know she could keep that stitch in there she would not try to lay an egg and because the stitch was in there that it would hold everything in place and that she, it wouldn't pop back out again and he also gave me some glucose water to rinse her vent out with and that's to just bring that inflammation down so that you know everything can just kind of calm down and that prolapse can stay inside well salt was trying to lay an egg the next day she was sitting there just like going <laughs> and, and i was like oh my gosh and the vet had told me if she tries to lay you have to cut the stitch you can't you, you know she could die like you can't let her just sit there and not be able to lay an egg so i had to cut the stitch she laid the egg but thank goodness the prolapse did not come out. And I really attribute that to this glucose water that the vet gave me. And he also gave me a recipe on how you can make it at home. Making glucose water is super easy. All you have to do is bring some water to boiling and then you start to add sugar to the water. And when you're putting the sugar in, it will dissolve. So you just keep adding spoon after spoon of sugar into the water until at some point you will see that it no longer dissolves. And that's when you know that it's done. So you're gonna let that cool completely. You do not wanna put hot water into your chicken's vent. <laughs> Ooh. You're gonna let it cool completely. And then once you've pushed the prolapse back in, you can rinse out the vent two or three times a day with this glucose water. And you wanna do it really gentle and really slowly. And that should really help to bring the inflammation down and hopefully keep the prolapse from reoccurring. But during this time, you definitely want to try and keep your chicken from laying. Now, salt is a, 
is a different character. She would just not stop laying. Usually when you offer chickens less light, that you know instinct to lay will shut down. You know The hormones will change and they'll just stop laying. So if you can keep them in an area that you can cover and keep them in darkness for longer so that their days are shorter, you're kind of artificially shortening their days, then they'll be less likely to lay and push that prolapse back out. Salt was being treated for a while. I actually kept her inside for about two weeks while she was recovering. And she was pretty lonely during this time, but I, I really felt it was necessary to do that so that she could heal completely. But she was super happy to go back out with her flock. Now I did have to do a bit of an integration process with her because the chickens like they didn't know who she was, but it didn't take very long and she was pecking and scratching with them and she was super happy. Now, if you wanna learn how to integrate new chickens into an existing flock, all you have to do is click right here. It's 100% friendly. Backyard chickens, education and entertainment. And I know you're gonna love it.